So, talking about four today. Com uh, combining functions, compositional functions, same idea. Um, so we'll get to what's behind me in a moment. But first, let's take a look at that kind of real-world example of what's going on here. So the expenses for a band to produce the master soundtrack for an album include renting a music studio and hiring a music engineer. These fixed costs are $12,000, and the cost to produce each album with packaging is $5. So our function here, C of X, outputs the cost of producing the master track plus X albums. So we have our baseline cost plus the cost per individual album. So we have cost as a function of the albums produced. And then R of X is our revenue. So it gives us the revenue from selling X albums if each album is sold for $12. So if I want to find my profit, P of X here, I could have individual situations, like in B here we'll have 3,000 albums. Or I can take these two functions and put them together into one single function, which would do all of the same computing all at once. So if profit is revenue minus our cost, then the R of X minus C of X, which we know what each of those are. It's 12 of X, or 12 X, not of X, 12 times X, minus 5 times X. And remember, I'm distributing it, so I can write it out in parentheses here when I swap them out. So if I get that all distributed, get that negative distributed, rather, we have 12 X minus 5 X plus the negative, flipping that to positive, $12,000. I can combine some like terms here. Oops. Not 12. And end up with 7x minus 12,000. Because if we think about it, their profit margin on each individual album is that seven dollars they're selling it for 12 and it takes them five to make it and then to figure out when they're making a profit we do have to subtract that initial uh, overhead from it so once we get to a point that this value is greater than twelve thousand, that's when our band is making a profit so we've got our example here how much profit is there from selling three thousand albums and I could plug 3,000 in here, plug 3,000 in there, and then subtract this value from that one. Or I can just plug 3,000 in down here. And that's really the benefit of these combining functions, is if I have several scenarios I need to look at, I could either plug in all the individual values up there and then just subtract over and over again, or I can just subtract once and then plug it in down here over and over again. So if we take a look at this, 7 times 3,000 minus the 12,000 puts us at 21,000 minus 12,000 or $9,000. So if our band sells 3,000 of their albums, they'll have made $9,000. That's all said and done. So addition is not the only, or subtraction rather, subtraction is not the only operation that we can use here, using the combining functions. So you've got that table there, and I've got it written out over here in the blue, showing how each operation is going to work. And so there are a couple of ways to write each one. I could say f plus g of x. And that's the same as taking f of x plus g of x. I could say f minus g of x, same thing as f of x minus g of x, and that's what we would have just done. We would have just looked at r minus c of x. We do the same thing with multiplication and division. 
making sure that with subtraction and division, we keep an eye on our order, so that if f is first here, it's first over there. If f is on top here, it's on top over here. All right. So what about a few examples of combining these functions? So if I have f of x is x minus 1, g of x is 5x plus x, and h of x is x squared, let's do a few of these operations. So my first one there is f plus g of x. I'm told in my table that f plus g of x is the same as f of x plus g of x. So we'll take f of x, this x minus 1, and g of x, oops, that goes 5x squared, 5x squared plus x. So I'll add that g of x, add 5x squared plus x. And so before I combine like terms here, I'm going to make a little side note. I see so many times students trying to take this x here and multiply it over there. Remember, this is not f plus g times x. This is f plus g of x. So you're never going to multiply this x into there. It's saying where this function is being defined. So now I'm going to combine my like terms and kind of move it so that my highest powers are out front. So let's get that 5x squared out front. So I have x plus x is 2x, goes down for me. And I've got that negative 1 left. So that's my final function here. f plus g of x is 5x squared plus 2x minus 1. All right. So... I'm going to jump down to D here, and then we'll talk about when we have numbers we're evaluating them as well. So jumping down to D, it's F over H of X. So F is up top here. I'm going to make it up top over there. H is on bottom. We're going to have this H on bottom here. And so, just like before, when I combine like terms, I'm going to see if there's any simplifying that I can do here. And in this case, there's not. Um, you might want to try and say, oh, x squared, I've got this x up top. But remember, it's got to be multiplication to cancel on division. So, I've got subtraction going on with this x. It's, this x isn't being multiplied by stuff up here. It's being subtracted. So, I can't do any canceling. We're done at this point. Now let's jump back over to B and take a look at um, evaluating these at certain values. So B, I'm asked for G minus F of 2. And like I was kind of, oh, negative 2. And like I was kind of saying with the band example, if I want, I can say, well, this is, oops, not F. G came first. I've got to make sure I have G first on the right as well. I can say this is G minus 2, or G of minus 2, minus F of negative 2. And then look at plugging them in up here. So I can just work off to the side. G of negative 2 would be 5 times negative 2 squared plus a negative 2, so minus 2, which would give me 4 times 5 is 20, minus 2 is 18. And then I can look at f of negative 2. And say that's negative 2 minus 1, or negative 3. And then bring it on over here and say I just found that g of negative 2 is 18. And f of negative 2 
is negative 3, and get my answer as 21. That's a perfectly valid option. If you want to take it apart and do these separate when we're evaluating at certain numbers, you can. The other option is more in line with what we did for that band example, where I first find the function itself. I'm going to first find what g minus f of x is. So 5x squared plus x minus, then make sure I get parentheses so I remember to distribute, x minus 1, and I'll distribute my negative. Those x's have been canceled for me, so I've got 5 times, not parentheses yet, 5x squared plus 1. And then if I want to, so, and then now I would evaluate at negative 2 and say 5 times negative 2 squared plus 1. Well, negative 2 squared is 4, times 5 is 20, plus 1. We're still going to get that 21. So either way works, either way is always going to work. It's just a matter of preference, really. So let's take a look at that last one, g times h of 1. So I have g times h of 1. And another way that we can do this, evaluating this, is kind of all at once, plugging the 1 in right at the top. So g of 1. would be 5 times 1 squared, which is swapping out my x, plus 1, swapping out that x. And then h of 1 would be 1 squared. And this works out nicely because I can plug this into my calculator or quick run it through in my head. 1 squared is 1, times 5 is 1, or is 1, times 5 is 5, plus 1 is 6, 1 squared is still 1, there would be 6. So there are a lot of ways that you can come after these. Really, any way that you would like uh, of those three is going to work. So I'll leave the practice there as part of your kind of skills check. Let's move on to the next page. All right, when I'm reading these off of a graph, actually that first graph is really tough to read. I'm going to jump down to the practice one and say don't worry about that top graph, it's a pain to read. So when we're reading them off of a graph, it's a lot more like that first way that I did it, where I found what g of negative 2 was and then found what f of negative 2 was and solved after that, because I don't know what the functions themselves look like in an, um, in an equation when I'm looking at a graph, but I can find the individual values. Let's get this graph up here. This is the graph they gave us, and we're calling it f of x. We'll get g of x up there as well.
these kinds of things. Okay. So, if I am looking for f of 2, we've kind of looked at this before. Remember that f of 2, that 2, has replaced the x that I would have had for f of x. So I'm looking at 2 on the x-axis. I go up to where the line for f of x is, because that's the one that is in my question here, f rather than g. And my y value here is positive 3. So I can say, let's do this. I can say that f of 2 equals 3. And on the next one with g of 1, I can go over to positive 1. And because I'm looking for g of 1, this time I'm going to go down to my g line. That's at negative 3. I can say g of 1 is negative 3. So when we take a look at the kind of composition of functions here, or not, yeah. When we talk about combining functions, composition is actually later, and this spoke earlier. Um, when I say g times f of 0, well, I don't have a line for the function g times f. But I can find each of those individually. Because remember, g times f of 0 is the same as g of 0 times f of 0. So if I find those pieces individually, I can do the multiplication then. So at 0, x equals 0. Down to my g line, it's at negative 2. So g of 0 is negative 2. And f of 0 is positive 2. So I've got negative 2 times positive 2. F time, or g times f of 0 is negative. I can do that all the way down the line here. Let's take a look at another one. If I look at f divided by g at 2, f divided by g of 2, remember that's f of 2 divided by g of 2, if I go over to positive 2 on my x-axis, f is at positive 3. So swap that out for positive 3. And at that positive 2, my g of x, I'm going to try to copy that very well, it looks like on not my drawing, it's at negative 1. So 3 over negative 1 is negative 3. So don't worry about that top graph. I'm going to leave E and F for you as part of the skills check then. And that is it for 84.